If I had the option to, this would be like the ultimate camera that I would shoot everything on. Downside is it's a little bit big, so I'm gonna make a little bit of compromise, and I think we got a new, I think we got a new setup right here that will work out pretty nicely. I'm just not getting it, Gene. How do you think the footage out of this is going to look? Because we have our very basic Canon M50, and then we put a speed booster just to utilize a little bit more of that sensor. You get a 15 millimeter, so you could get a nice like wide angle, so it's perfect for vlogging. Perfect. Right? For vlogging. Do you think it's gonna be any better quality? Do you think you're gonna notice a difference having this versus just like a, you know, a Canon zoom on there? I do know that there's a lot of qualities that come out of the lens that will definitely be transferred over to the image. Because the lens does have a lot to do, not just in sharpness, but like just characteristics just the look of the look. Of it, yeah. But then of course there's you're also a serious limitation. <laughs> limitation to what the sensor does. I would honestly expect the lens to affect the camera more than the camera to affect the lens, if that makes sense. The sensors are pretty good nowadays, but I feel like the glass has a big effect. I could be wrong. I don't, am I thinking wrong? I, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking right now. To be honest, I, I really have no <laughs> idea. All right, so we have our Sports Illustrated supermodel over here. Oh yeah. I don't know, what do you guys think? Does it look better than it usually does? Now, I do have it closed down all the way to an F22 because it's so bright out here. So we do need to put some ND filters on here, but for a cinema lens like this, you need to put on a matte box to do so. So let's do that. So we got our Airy LMB25 matte box. It's a clamp on, so we're just gonna slide that onto here. But look at this. Man, this is so dumb, but honestly, I'm kind of excited to see how the footage comes out. All right, how many stops of light should we cut? Right now we're shooting at an F22. Let's try to cut it by a few stops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stops to get it all the way to an F2.0. So seven times 0.3 is 2.1. So that is going to be this ND filter right here. Basically each stop is 0.3. So look at that, that is dark. But we're gonna slide that in here. And now the footage looks pitch black. So I get to open it all the way up. You know what's funny is we have like seven of these ND filters and I think like two of them is probably the price of this Canon M50. Oh, this is just, this is dumb. I don't think anyone would ever do this. Except for me, of course. Let's see what this looks like now. Also, what's cool about this lens is it's a 15 to 40 and it's an F2.0 all the way through and it looks great. You guys know how bad I want to be in this pool right now? I'm out here playing with it. I, you better subscribe. I'm sweating. It's hot. I could be in there right now. I don't know what it is about this shot. That's the thing with lenses. It's like, it's kind of hard to put your finger on it. Why does it look so good? But it looks good. Who thinks Sam should be a swimsuit model? Everyone. Man, why do I keep doing this to myself? Coming to places that are so hot. Next time I'm gonna go to Alaska. Now when it comes to usability, I think there's two things that this setup really needs. One is a tripod or some sort of stabilization because these cine lenses don't come with any stabilization. And this is such a lightweight camera that it kind of does do a little bit of that shake. And of course with a cine lens like this, we have manual focus. So it would be nice to have a nice big bright monitor. So it's Get that set up real quick. This is the O'Connor 1030 DS and it costs quite a bit more than the camera also. <laughs> Let's try to set the record for the most expensive Canon M50. This is a small HD Cine 7 and I, this isn't sponsored. They're not paying me to do any, but I love this monitor. It's daylight viewable, it's sharp, it's great for pulling focus. We got Chris in the house, so Woo! he's gonna be doing some stunt diving. A double backflip, triple backflip, triple what's he doing back for us? Triple backflip. Wheel, roundhouse, backhand spring. If you break your neck, can I still put this online? Yes. Cool, that's all that matters. All right. I actually didn't think this through. Usually I would mount this monitor somewhere on the camera, but this camera doesn't have a cage where I can kind of mount this to, so I guess I'm just gonna be hand holding out. I, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly this camera, not designed for this. <laughs> the final piece, microphone. You guys think this is the most expensive Canon M50 ever? Probably, I, we're at least getting close. I mean, with all this, come on. Well, let's film some stuff with this setup here. Enough of this nonsense. I'm getting in this pool and then we're gonna go and film a concert. Let's go. So with the M50 plus a speed booster plus a f2.0 lens that should in theory give us pretty good low light and it's really dark here Let's see if we could make anything look cool. Oh, there's motorcycles there 2500 ISO all the way wide open and an f2 with a speed booster That's how that looks. Which is actually pretty impressive because it is really really dark in here What do you think camera or lens since I started using this as my vlog setup? 
things have just gotten way better. It's a little inconvenient. This can kind of get in the way of your face. It's not so bad though, huh? Yeah, there you go. It's, there. it's definitely doable. As YouTubers trying to make videos about how to level up. Oh yeah. How to improve. This is how you improve. This is the solution right here. It's not yeah. about the camera, you guys. It's about this lens. And a matte box. <laughs> matte box is key. Even if you don't use it for filters, it just looks cool. You gotta look cool. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. yeah. Dude, I did the 1DX for the longest time. Look at that. Bam. <laughs> left, right, left, right. Super easy. What? Oh, this is potatoes. I don't know how potatoes does his intro. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. He's usually laughing at something, right? <laughs> Anyways, there's a show going on inside. Let's see what that looks like with this beast. set up for this shoot, the Monstro with the Moby Pro. My arms are shaking. <laughs> you can't hear anything. This is amazing. Peter held the red with the Moby Pro like this for such a long time. Go crazy for picks. <laughs> Filming the concert last night with the Red Monstro on the Movie Pro was awesome, but I think we should have just shot it on this Canon M50, don't you? Let's go shoot with this. Chris is gonna do some dancing for us. Hell yeah. So we're going all out. Sam's putting on the easy rig right now so he could hold the gimbal up for a longer period of time. And we're gonna go up and hike this mountain right here. Sam, you ready to hike up this mountain? Oh yeah. Let's do this. Two hours later. It's getting hard to breathe. <laughs> Luckily, all I have to do is carry this thing around. This is the mimic system. So I basically control the gimbal and pull focus with this tilt and nucleus while Sam does all the hard work and Chris will do some dancing. Let's do this. The footage is actually coming out pretty sweet. Chris does want everyone to know that he does better dancing, but the ground is kind of rough right now. Yeah, we're, but we're on like uneven terrain. Yeah. Like normally I'd be gliding like Michael uh -huh. Jackson and grooving and keep going, <laughs> so just know that, all right? But I think it looks dope. We got a little bit of sun left, so let's just keep shooting and see what we get. Honestly, I've shot with the M50 for a long time and I've never seen footage like that come out of there. Sometimes you could totally tell that it lacks a little bit of dynamic range and it's definitely not designed to be put on a gimbal like that. But I mean, man, some of the footage that came out of that looks so good. Never seen footage like that come out of a Canon M50 before. So yeah, this is what a fully rigged out Canon M50 looks like, in case you were wondering. <laughs> got a handheld rig on here. Of course, you gotta have a Teradek for that wireless video feed. And I got a core power base battery, I think is what it's called. But these are cool because they have a V-mount battery, but also they have two P taps and also two USB ports. So if you need to charge your phone, but yeah, this power base by core, awesome to have when you have a bunch of accessories like this. I did the math on all the accessories we used with this Canon M50 in this video, and the total came out to over $62,000. But to be completely honest, I was impressed with the footage coming out of the M50. And it wasn't very obvious at first. It's not like you could just take a cinema lens, slap it on any camera and have it look great. But once you start adding the rest of the package, you know, the map box, the ND filters, the rig, the power, the accessories. And after we had everything in place to fully maximize the package, I was like, holy shit. 
<laughs> I can't believe this footage is coming out of a $500 camera, but I don't know, what'd you guys think? Were you guys able to tell a difference? I always love testing out lenses because there's always this mystery factor to them, you know? It's not like a cut and dry, this is better than this one. Like I recently visited Aerie to check out some of their signature prime lenses and they show me the difference between that with like Cook lenses and Alter Primes and all these other super high-end lenses. And the differences between all of them were pretty subtle, but you definitely feel a difference from each one. So I thought it was pretty cool seeing how it impacted the image on something even as simple as a Canon M50. So does this setup make any sense? Absolutely not. I think of it as like uh, having a race car with 800 horsepower, but the transmission tops out at like 70 miles per hour. To utilize the engine, you need good transmission, you need good tires, you need good suspension, you need good aerodynamics, you need everything to work perfectly together to get that maximum performance, just like this. Even if you have a red camera with a super expensive cinema lens, it's hard to utilize that if you don't have the proper map box with some super high quality ND filters. Speaking of ND filters, thanks Peter for the Peter McKinnon series Polar Pro filters. ND filters are another one of those things where it's not really sexy to think about and it's not very obvious the difference between a super high quality one and some cheap one that you find on Amazon. But after using some crappy ones for a while and when I first used this, I was like, wow, every everything looks so clear. Again, I'm not sponsored by Peter or anything like that. This is just my two cents. I'm not, none of this is sponsored. But let's wrap this up by reading a few comments from my last video, which was all about the Insta360 Go, a teeny little action camera. Top comment was, can't stop laughing about, this dog is waterproof. This dog is water resistant. Made my day. Now I can film 15 second intervals of the life that I don't have. That's what always happens to me with action cameras. You know, I see GoPro's footage of someone jumping 50 feet on a wakeboard and I'm like, I wanna do that. And I get the action camera and I'm just like, uh, I'm gonna go film my dog. I'm on potato withdrawal symptom. When's the new video coming out? It is actually kind of funny. A few days ago in Phoenix, I was hanging out by the pool and somebody was like, hey, aren't you potato jet? And I was like, yeah, what's up? And he it's like, how come you're not posting more videos right now? <laughs> so thank you guys for keeping me on my toes. <laughs> Make a video about IMAX cameras. Oh, you know what camera I really want to test out is the Aerie Alexa LF. You guys want to see a video about that? Let's do it. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm going to go vlog now. Hey guys, so today we're going to go to the park.